Okay, now it's time to talk about sine and cosine. And what I will do here is introduce each of these and work through some simple examples. And then we'll come back and look at sine and cosine for special angles and sine and cosine on the unit circle and inverse sine and cosine, just uh, in a similar manner to what we did with the tangent ratio and also some problems and some applications. Okay, first of all, uh, sine and cosine. Right, here's a triangle and notice that one of the angles is marked there's angle theta right there and this side is the side opposite theta this side is the side adjacent to theta and of course the long side opposite the right angle is the hypotenuse we've already said that the tangent of theta is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side that ratio there are two other important ratios the sine of theta is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse and the cosine of theta is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And I'll write both, both of those down. Okay, the sine of theta, that's S-A-N-E, the sine of angle theta is the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And the cosine of theta is the length of the adjacent side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And those ideas should be memorized. That's the sine ratio and the cosine ratio. And they're not hard to memorize and you will memorize them just by using them a lot in the next few lectures. Okay, a couple of comments on the sine ratio. The sine of angle theta is by definition the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. So we can write sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. And I'll use these convenient abbreviations for opposite and hypotenuse. But the thing I want you to understand right now is that this right here, sin theta, that is read as sine theta or the sine of angle theta it's not sin theta, and it is definitely not sine times theta. This is not two things multiplied together. This is the sine of angle theta. Theta is an angle, and sine theta is a number that is equal to this ratio. And here's a quick example. We're given a diagram, and we're told to find the sine of angle theta. So here's a right triangle. Here's angle theta and we know that the sine of theta will be the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So if this is theta, the side opposite theta is here, and the hypotenuse is 2.9. So the sine of theta is simply 2.0 centimeters divided by 2.9 centimeters, and as long as those units are the same, they will always cancel out. So we just get 2.0 divided by 2.9, which is equal to 0.69 or at least that's what it is rounded to two decimal places. Here's another example. We're told to find the sine of angle alpha, and again that's an alpha. That font doesn't look great, but that's supposed to be the Greek letter alpha. And that's this angle right down here. And it doesn't matter how the triangle is oriented. In this case, the hypotenuse is, is here it's like this is sitting flat on the floor or on the table resting on the hypotenuse. The right angle is up here, but the sine of alpha or the sine of any angle is always the opposite over the hypotenuse. So what angle is opposite alpha? Well, if we start at alpha and go across, it's this side over here, 5. So the sine of alpha is 5 over, and the hypotenuse, what's the hypotenuse down here? Well, you could find that with the Pythagorean theorem, but at this point in your study of math, you should recognize 5, 12, and 13 as a Pythagorean triple. So that side is 13. So the sine of alpha is 5 over 13. And you could leave it like that, or you could uh, divide that on the calculator and 5 divided by 13 is 0.385, at least to three digits. Those digits go on. It's actually a repeating decimal, but we'll, we'll just stop there, 0.385. 
And one more comment about the sine function that should make sense to you here. Look at these three triangles. These are all similar triangles. They're just different sizes, but they're all the exact same shape. One, one is just a different scale than the other. And in all three cases, there's an angle marked theta, and then you can see that the, the ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse, that will be the same for each triangle. And as long as the angle doesn't change, that ratio doesn't change. So again, we see the idea of a constant ratio for each angle. It is the angle that matters. If the angle changes, you can see the ratio changes. Now, this side compared to this one is different than it was before. But it's the same in all three of these triangles, as long as all three of those triangles have the same angle. So it isn't really the specific lengths that matter, it's the ratio of the lengths. And that ratio is the same for any given angle.